community quarantine measures sa mga target na lugar. Ang dance component naman ay nagbibigay daan sa pagbubukas ng ekonomiya at sa pagpapagaan sa epekto ng pandemya sa ekonomiya ng bansa. Ang NAP Phase 2 ay nananatiling nakaangkla sa estratehiya ng gobyerno na tinatawag na PDITR na naglalayo na maiwasan at makontrol ang pagkalat ng virus. Ang ibig sabihin ng PDITR ay Prevent, Detect, Isolate, Treat, and Reintegrate. Ang prevention component ay tumutukoy sa pagpapatupad ng minimum health standards tulad ng paghuhugas ng kamay, physical distancing, pagsusuot ng face mask, personal na kalinisan, at community lockdown. Ang second component naman ay estratehiyang detection at kasama dito ang pagpapatupad ng agresibong contact tracing at expanded community testing. Ang ikatlong component ay ang estratehiyang isolation kung saan mayroong provision ng isolation facilities para sa mga mild o asymptomatic cases, community protocols para sa mga positive cases at construction support para sa mga government hospitals. Ang ikaapat na component ay ang estratehiyang treatment kung saan kasama ang One Hospital Command na isa sa mga pinakabagong hakbang ng task force upang mapadali ang pag-access ng mga Pilipino sa medical care at treatment, ang Mega Temporary Treatment and Monitoring Facility at ang Public and Private Referral Hospitals. Ang ikalima at huling component ay ang estratehiyang reintegration sa lipunan ng mga gumaling na pasyente. Ang mga pasyente gumaling ay dapat pa rin sumunod sa minimum health standards at dapat ay nababatid nila na posibleng sila ay mahawa muli. Kapag siguradong nasusunod ang estratehiyang ito, maaari nang simulan ang implementasyon ng ating transisyon sa new normal. Ang iba't ibang uri ng zoning or targeted lockdown ay Barangay lockdown, block lockdown, block and house lockdown, street lockdown, house lockdown, and building lockdown. Ang zoning ay mayroon ding apat na kategorya. Una ay ang critical zone o ang mga lugar kung saan ang paunang bilang ng mga kaso ay natukoy sa nakaraang pitong araw. Pangalawa ay ang containment zone o ang mga lugar na walang bagong kaso ngunit katabi ng isang lugar na ikinategorya bilang CRZ. Pangatlo naman ang buffer zone o ang mga lugar na walang bagong kaso ngunit katabi ng lugar na isinailalim sa kategoryang CZ. At panghuli, ang area outside buffer zone o ang lahat ng natitirang mga lugar na walang bagong kaso at hindi na kategorya bilang CZ o BZ. Ang zoning containment strategy na ipatutupad ng local task force ay naglalayong mapigilan ang pagkalat ng COVID-19 at mabawasan ang epekto nito sa lokal na ekonomiya sa pamagitan ng contact tracing, testing, isolation at treatment ng mga tinatawag na suspect, probable at confirmed cases. Samantala, sinisiguro ng pamalaan na mayroong mga hakbang na ipapatupad upang matiyak na makakamit natin ang ating layunin na makabawi ang ekonomiya at mabigyan ng komportabling buhay ang bawat mamamayan sa gitna ng pandemya. Ang gobyerno ay patuloy na nakatuon sa pagpapahusay sa healthcare capacity ng bansa sa pamagitan ng pagtatayo ng karagdagang ICU at isolation beds testing laboratories, referral hospitals, swabbing centers, at quarantine facilities sa buong bansa. Ang mga medical frontliners mula sa gobyerno at pribadong sektor ay binibigyan ng proteksyon at nakakatanggap ng mga benepisyo, gayon din ng suporta na kailangan nila upang pangunahan ang laban natin sa COVID-19. Kukuha rin ng karagdagang 10,000 health workers ang gobyerno upang matulungan ang ating mga doktor at nars sa pagganap sa kanilang tungkulin. Sa ngayon, wala pang gamot o bakuna laban sa virus, kaya naman mahalaga na makipagtulungan ang lahat upang mapigilan ang pagkalat ng COVID-19. Palaging sundin ang minimum health standards at manatili sa bahay hanggat maaari at iwasan ang non-essential travel. Nilalayo na National Action Plan Against COVID-19 na ito na makasagip ng buhay at matiyak ang ating kalusugan, kaligtasan at kinabukasan habang tayo ay bumabangon sa resesyon. 
dahil kapag sama-sama, we heal as one. Good morning, Manila and Asia. Good morning, Europe. Good evening, USA. It's um, 10.17 in the morning, Philippine Standard Time. Good day to all of you. I am J.V. Arsena of the Presidential Communications Operations Office, Office of the Global Media and Public Affairs here in Manila. Welcome to the Virtual Presser. The Virtual Presser is PCOO's interactive online video platform pioneered and launched by the PCOO OGMPA for engaging with the global and local media and foreign audiences. Again, I am delighted to welcome our media participants. More than 30 participants joining us today from across the globe. Thanks to all of you for joining us. And as we observe the November uh, this November, the Environmental Awareness Month, as prescribed by Republic Act No. 9512, will be speaking today with National Security uh, Advisor Secretary Hermogenes Esperon and National Mapping and Resource Information Authority Deputy Administrator Efren Carandang to talk about the role of the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea and the country's maritime domains to promote national awareness on the role of national, natural resources in the country's economic growth. But just a short introduction about our speakers. Secretary Hermogenes Esperon is the National Security Advisor and Director General of the National Security Council. He started serving the government in 1970 as a cadet in the Philippine Military Academy prior to the appointment in the National Security Council he held extensive executive positions in the government, namely in the Philippine uh, Presidential Management Staff, Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process, and the Armed Forces of the Philippines, among others. Deputy Administrator Efren Carandang is the Deputy Administrator with CESO Rank 2 of the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, supervising two of its technical branches. He has been serving Namria for 36 years. Prior to his appointment as Deputy Administrator in 2010, he was a hyd hydrographer, Tama, sir? Yes. hydrographer, chief oceanographer, and director of engineering services, while concurrently working on maritime, ocean, and law of the sea issues. Good afternoon, Secretary Esperon. Good afternoon, DA uh, Efren. Uh, Hi, good morning, I'm sorry. Welcome again to the virtual presser. Um, as a reminder to our participants, today's virtual press conference is on the record. We have a live streaming on the Presidential Communications Operations Office page, PCO Global Media Affairs Facebook page, and other PCOO and government affiliated FB pages. Media participants can ask their questions live via Zoom or you may send your questions through the Zoom Q&A chat box and I will read your questions so with that, let's get started. Secretary Speron, thank you again for joining us today and uh, DA Karandang. And Sec, I'll turn it over to you for your opening statement to be followed by DA Karandang. Sec. Sa ating mga kababayan, to each and everyone at home watching us online, my colleagues and uh, fellow workers in government, and member agencies of the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea, good morning. Today's uh, briefing is about the country's vast maritime domain and responsibilities of the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea. My briefing will follow this outline. Outline? Okay. Uh, I, I will discuss uh, the national territory and maritime domain, the national task force and the creation and the mandate thereof, 
the National Task Force uh, West Philippine Sea Organization, the NTF, WPS Areas of Responsibility, and Policy uh, Directives. These are the meets and bounds of the national territory of the Philippines as defined in the 1987 Philippine Constitution and other laws, rules, and regulations. And our maritime domain in accordance with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Seas or UNCLOS. The Philippines is surrounded by a vast expanse of water that is seven times larger than its land area or a 300,000 square kilometer land area compared to 2,100,000 square kilometers of water. Long before the Philippines was named Las Islas uh, Filipinas in 1543, the Philippines was and remains an active maritime nation. This is a reality. We see this in the unique design of the Vinta and the Balangay, the Galleon uh, trade, the dominance of the Filipino seamen all over the world, and consumption of fish, second only to rice. No wonder then that the Philippines fought for the international recognition and acceptance of the archipelagic doctrine during the UN conferences on the law of the sea held in 1958, 1960, and 1973 to 1982. The archipelagic doctrine was eventually embodied in part four of the 1982 UNCLOS. In 1994, our national marine policy was written to emphasize the country's archipelagic state and to balance the focus of economic development from land to our maritime, maritime domain and its resources. Our national marine policy is first is our first blueprint on the blue economy. In 2017, through proclamation number 316, to raise the national consciousness of our maritime wealth and maritime and archipelagic state, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte declared September as Maritime and Archipelagic Nation Awareness Month, or MANAMO. Did you know that fish is nature's superfood? According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, fish is not only a source of protein and healthy fats, but also a unique source of essential elements such as vitamins A, B12, D, calcium, iron, iodine, selenium, and zinc. Zinc is one of the elements to build up the body's immune system, which is, essen which is essential to keep the coronavirus at bay. Therefore, we need to protect, preserve, and undertake sustainable practices so that we will always have fish or nature's super food. As National Security Advisor, it is my advocacy to push the Philippines to continue to modernize the land, sea, air, space, and cyber capabilities towards an enhanced surveillance, enforcement, and development cap capabilities in safeguarding our vast maritime domain and marine wealth initially valued at 75 trillion pesos. From here, let me proceed to our ongoing efforts to safeguard our sovereignty, territorial integrity, and national patrimony in the vast maritime uh, domain. Let me, we, we may recall that just days after the pres President Rodrigo Roa Duterte assumed office in 2016 and was uh, preparing for his first State of the Nation address, the UNCLOS Arbitral Tribunal issued its award on July 12, 2016, in favor of the Philippines. In his first State of the Nation, 
address on July 25, 2016, the President said, We strongly affirm and respect the outcome of the case before the Permanent Court of Arbitration as an important contribution to the ongoing efforts to pursue a peaceful resolution and management of our disputes. After his first State of the Nation address, President Duterte convened the National Security Council, gathering all four living presidents of the country to discuss the arbitral award, among others. Former President Fidel B. Ramos was asked to lead an ice-breaking mis mission, which led to the first state visit to China on, on October 16 to 21, 2016, by, of course, led by the President. It was during this visit that the bilateral consultation mechanism on the South China Sea was created as a confidence building mechanism to discuss and explore other areas of cooperation. As early as October 2016, in his bilateral meeting with China's President Xi Jinping, President Duterte raised the arbitral award. Despite China's non-recognition and non-acceptance of the arbitral award, President Duterte remained firm and he, that, he, that he shall raise again the arbitral award within his term. After three years, at the sidelines of the Second Belt and Road Forum for Inter International Cooperation in April 2019, and at the sidelines of China's hosting of the FIBA Basketball World Cup opening ceremony in August 2019, President Duterte kept his promise and raised the arbitral award again. President Duterte said the arbitral award is final, binding, and not subject to appeal. Now, after four years since the 2016 arbitral award was issued, in his address during the general debate of the 75th session of the United, of the United Nations General Assembly on September 22, 2020, President Duterte reiterated, we must remain mindful of our obligations and commitments to the Charter of the United Nations and as amplified by the 1982 Manila Declaration on the Peaceful Settlement of International Disputes, the Philippines affirms that commitment in the South China Sea in accordance with UNCLOS and the 2016 Arbitral Award. The award is now part of international law beyond compromise and beyond the reach of passing governments to dilute, diminish, or abandon. We firmly reject attempts to undermine it." End of quote. Now, let me now go to the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea. It became operational on March 17, 2016, through Memorandum Circular 94. The predecessor of the National Task Force was the Interagency Committee on the West Philippine Sea, created in 2011 and chaired by the Department of Foreign Affairs. In the first semester of 2017, the security of the Philippine rice and the adjacent waters in the northern seaboard were challenged again by the intrusive <coughs> activities of China. Accordingly, President Duterte tasked the National Security Advisor to harmonize all government activities to ensure the security and development of the Philippine rice. In 2018, our government found out that the International Hydrographic Organization Subcommittee 
on undersea feature names, approved China's naming of five undersea features in the Philippine rice, which it claimed it discovered in 2004 survey. The Department of Foreign Affairs protested that it did not issue any permit to China to conduct marine scientific research in the Philippine rice. Subsequently, therefore, President Duterte instructed on February 25, 2018, the Department of Foreign Affairs to, hold on ho to put on hold all research activities by foreign entities in the Philippine rice until the government has completed its review of the said permits. Accordingly, all permits to conduct research in the Philippine rice by foreign entities shall be reviewed and assessed by the National Security Advisor and approved by the President. In 2019, for the recent developments, when President Duterte visited Batanes, after it was hit by an earthquake, he directed the military, marine law enforcement, and other concerned agencies to conduct enhanced routine patrol, improve airports and seaports, and secure all the islands in the northernmost part of the Philippines' national territory. The President reiterated his directive during the 40th Cabinet meeting on August 5, 2019, and joined AFP, the uh, joint AFP-PNP command conference on September 5, 2019, to give out more instructions. The National Task Force West Philippine Sea, NTFWPS, has 16 member agencies namely the DFA, DND, DOJ, DILG, DENR, DOE, DA Agriculture, DTI, DOTR, DOF, NEDA, National Coast System, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, PNP Maritime Group, Philippine Coast Guard, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, PCOO, and the DOST. It also has close interactions with the University of the Philippines <coughs> Marine Scientific Institute and National Institute of Geological Sciences. The National Security Advisor serves as the Chairman and the National of the National Security Council, uh, Secretariat, uh, provides administrative and technical support to the National Task Force. Structurally, this is the various levels of organization of the National Task Force West Philippine Sea. The NTF WPS receives guidance from the President through the Cabinet and Cabinet Cluster on Security, Justice, and Peace. The NTF WPS meets regularly once a week to assess developments and incidents in the West Philippine Sea and Philippine Rice. Developments and incidents can be elevated to the Cabinet Security Cluster and before the Executive Committee of the National Security Council. Appropriate committees of the Senate and House are also, House of Representatives, are also kept uh, informed. The National Task Force, WPS, has two, two area level task forces which orchestrate and synchronize the efforts of the different government agencies at the area level. In June 2016, the Executive Secretary directed the Armed Forces of the Philippines through the Western Command and the Northern Luzon Command to create 
convene and lead the area task forces respectively. In terms of geographic scope and area, the area task force north, led by the AFP NOLCOM, covers Baso de, ba, Bajo de Masinloc or Scarborough Shoal, the Luzon Strait, Philippine Rice, and the adjacent waters of our northern and eastern seaboards in the Philippine Sea. The Area Task Force West, led by the AFP Westcom, covers the Philippine-occupied islands, features, and waters in the Kalayaan Island Group, coastal and littoral areas surrounding Palawan up to the limits of the exclusive economic zone and the Malampaya Natural Gas to Water Project. The West Philippine Sea. Presidential Decree Number uh, 1596, dated June 1978, established the municipality of Kalayaan, which is composed of the islands, islands, reefs, and other maritime features of the Kalayaan Island Group. The term West Philippine Sea is defined in Administrative Order Number 29, dated September 5, 2012, and covers the area shown on the screen. The West Philippine Sea corresponds to the maritime zones of the Philippines on the western side of the archipelago, including the maritime zones of the high tide features of the Kalayaan Island Group. Let me go to the Kalayaan Island Group, which is under the area of responsibility of the Area Task Force West. The Philippines occupies and maintains outposts in nine features in the KIG, namely Parola Island, Pagasa Islands, as it is composed of several Ks, Sandy Ks, Panata Island, Kota Island, Likas Island, Patag Island, Lawak Island, Rizal Reef, and Ayungin uh, Shoal. Meantime, meanwhile, this is uh, Bajo de Masinloc or Scarborough Shoal within the area of responsibility of Area Task Force North. Bajo de Masinloc is a lone coral atoll located on the apex of what appears to be a long dormant underwater volcano. Bao de Masinloc is 116 nautical miles west of Zambales and 448 nautical miles south of Hainan, China. It received its name, Scarborough, from the British ship HMS Scarborough, a ship that was wrecked there around the time that the British conducted the very first systematic and accurate charting of the South China Sea in 1812. The Philippine rice, also, which is uh, also within the area of responsibility of the Area Task Force North, uh, is shown in this slide. On April 12, 2012, the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf validated the Philippines' submission to an extended continental shelf in the Benham or Philippine Rice region. The Commission, in essence, affirmed that the Philippines has ex exclusive sovereign rights to explore and exploit living and non-living resources found in the seabed and subsoil in its extended continental shelf in the Philippine rice uh, region. On May 16, 2017, to assert the Philippines' sovereign rights and jurisdiction over the area, President Duterte renamed Benham Rice to Philippine Rice through Executive Order Number uh, 75. So now, in addition to the 200 uh, nautical miles exclusive economic zone and continental shelf, 
the Philippines has 150 nautical miles of extended continental shelf. The Philippine rice comprises 24.9 million hectares. 11.4 million hectares are our continental shelf inside our EEZ, and 13.5 million hectares are our extended continental shelf. On marine scientific research, on May 15, to 16, 2018, President Duterte graced a series of commemorative activities for the Philippine rice, and uh, many firsts were achieved. It was the first offshore maritime event of the President, and the first largest coordinated multi-agency and multi-spectrum event that featured the country's marine scientific research. Aboard BRP Dabao del Sur in Casiguran Bay, Aurora Province, President Duterte brought together and sent, sent off the country's best scientists led by the University of the Philippines and other government research institutions to an all-Filipino marine scientific research to the Philippine rice. And this was the message the keynote address and the, the keynote and sent off message to the president to the scientists. I have complete faith in the capabilities of our world-class scientists and I recognize the need to provide them with the necessary means to fulfill your mandate. Siguro, take isang barko. Take isang barko talaga. Further, President uh, Duterte signed Proclamation Number 489, which established the Philippine Rice Marine Resource Reserve. This marine reserve has two zones. One for strict protection zone with an area of 49,684 hectares, limited to scientific studies, and a special fisheries management area with an area of 302,700 hectares for the sustainable development and regulated utilization of resources. Finally, let me go to the policy directives of the president as my, the last part of my presentation. Number one. Investing on credible defense posture, modernization of land, air, including unmanned deployments, sea, super space, surface and undersea, space, including satellites and radars, and cyber capabilities. Note that the Philippine expenditures for defense have gone down from a high point of 2.71 of gross national domestic product in 1980 to only 0.96 in 2019. And we will allocate more to defense spending. Number two, strengthening maritime law enforcement capabilities. We have the new procurements. Number three, upgrading of facilities in all Philippine occupied maritime areas and features. Take note that we now have a harbor, safe harbor in Pagasa Island and a beaching ramp, which will lead to the repair of our airstrip in uh, Pagasa Island. Number four, improving the welfare of the community, such as the residents in the municipality of Kalayaan, Palawan, and island communities in our northern uh, seaboard. Number five, combating illegal, unreported, and unregulated uh, fishing. Number six, conducting robust marine scientific research, including the acquisition of marine scientific research vessels for our national academic research fleet to be operated by the University of the Philippines Maritime Marine Science Institute and National Institute of Geological Sciences. 
they are acquiring four research vessels. Number seven, upholding marine environment protection, conservation, and sustainable development, and exploitation of our marine resources. Eight, promoting oil and gas exploration and development. This is very important for us to enjoy the bounties of the seabed of our exclusive economic zone. Number nine, securing and developing our islands, including the Philippine rice and adjacent waters of our northern and eastern seaboards in the Philippine Sea, strengthening bilateral regional engagements and other confidence building measures and mechanisms with our regional partners and other allies. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I end my briefing. I hope we have introduced to you as you wanted the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea and the ongoing activities in our maritime domains. I hope you have appreciated well the current policy directives of the President. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, uh, Secretary Esperon. Ang susunod na magbibigay naman ang kanyang presentation at uh, opening statement ay si Deputy Administrator Efren Carandang of Namria. Sir? Thank you, As Asset KV. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Secretary Esperon. Magandang umaga po sa ating mga kababayan who are watching on TV and online and members of the press who are joining us today. On behalf of the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea, I will discuss the maritime areas in the West Philippine Sea, or WPS, where the Republic of the Philippines exercises sovereignty, sovereign rights, and jurisdiction. My briefing will cover the geographical scope of the WPS, including the different maritime areas. I will also discuss the coordinated activities being undertaken by the different government agencies, the processes that influence the fish productivity in the area, and the oil and gas resources. The West Philippine Sea comprises the maritime areas on the western side of the Philippine archipelago. Can you show the slide, please? These areas include These areas include the Luzon Sea. Next slide, please. As well as the waters around, within, and adjacent to the Kalayaan Island Group and Bajo de Masinloc, which is also known as the Scarborough Shoal. The following slides illustrate the different maritime zones in the WPS according to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS. From the archipelagic baselines of the main archipelago, there is the 12 nautical mile territorial sea where the state exercises sovereign powers. Then there is another 12 nautical mile belt comprising the contiguous zone where the state exercises certain enforcement jurisdiction with respect to customs, fiscal, immigration, and sanitary laws and regulations. Next is the exclusive economic zone extending 200 nautical miles from the same baselines where the state enjoys sovereign rights or exclusive economic rights. The EEZ pertains to the water column only. About two thirds of the Kalayan Island group lie within the EEZ where there are several high tide features or rocks as the 2016 arbitral award classified them. Bajo de Masinloc, composed of several rocks, is also located within this EEZ. These rocks are territories in themselves and entitled to their respective 12 nautical mile territorial seas. While the low tide features 
or those features that are exposed during low tide but submerged during high tide are also entitled to a territorial sea if they are located wholly or partly within 12 nautical miles of a high tide feature. Beneath the EEZ is the legal continental shelf comprising the seabed and subsoil where the state likewise enjoys sovereign economic rights. Low tide elevations within the area such as the Panganiban Reef or Mischief Reef and the Yungin Shoal or Second Thoma Shoal and the fully submerged features like Rectobank or Reed Bank form part of this continental shelf. Now, about one third of the Kalayan Island group is located beyond 200 nautical miles from the main island of Palawan. This is where the Philippine held features of Pag-asa, Pag-asa Islands, which includes the surrounding case and reefs, Parola, Kota, and Panata are located. This along with, with the other high tide features within the Kalayan Island group have the respective 12 nautical mile territorial seas. They all form part of the municipality of Palawan. Presently, the Philippines occupies nine features in the Kalayan Island group. The rest of the features are either occupied by other claimant states or presently unoccupied, but not all of them are represented in this map. Finally, we have an extended continental shelf in the Western Palawan region. It is located beyond the EEZ within the seabed area that we call the ECS corridor. An interagency group being led by NAMRIA or the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority is collecting, assembling technical and scientific data in support of a future submission to the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf, which is the same UN body where we made our submission for the Philippine Rice or Benham Rice in 2009. The ECS will also form part of the maritime domains of the West Philippine Sea. Just recently, the Sangguniang Bayan ng Kalayaan passed Ordinance Number 50-2020, naming the four sandbars located west of Pag-asa Island as Pag-asa K1, Pag-asa K2, Pag-asa K3, and Pag-asa K4. The ordinance also named the reefs located east of the island as Pag-asa Reef 1 and Pag-asa Reef 2. The Pag-asa Island, the four case to the west and the two reefs to the east, form an island chain which we now collectively call the Pag-asa Islands. Now, let me discuss the activities of the different government agencies in the WPS, starting off with marine scientific research. In 2017, the National Coast Watch Council initiated a program entitled Coordinated National Marine Scientific Research Initiatives and Related Activities in Philippine Waters, or CONMIRA. Since then, different agencies of the government have been conducting coordinated marine scientific research in the WPS, the Philippine RISE, and other parts of our EEZ. You will recall that in 2018, the president suspended the conduct of marine scientific research by foreign entities in Philippine waters and tasked the National Security Advisor and Chair of the NTF WPS, Secretary Jaramogenes Esperon Jr., to review all such applications from foreign entities. At the same time, Secretary Esperon tapped the working mechanism under the NTF WPS to harmonize all government-funded MSRs and assisted the relevant agencies in securing additional funds for their marine research activities. As presented earlier, the All Filipino MSR to the Philippine Rise in May 2018 became CONMIRA's milestone activity, where the Philippine Rise was declared by the President as a marine resource reserve. Now, on the marine ecosystems in the WPS, the DENR, Biodiversity Management Bureau, reported that the coral reefs in the WPS cover an estimated area of 600 to 1,000 square kilometers, 
or about 30% of the total reef area of the country. The KIG and neighboring Palawan are major fishing grounds for thousands of Filipino fishermen, contributing to food security and livelihood of the coastal communities. However, the area is threatened by illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, or IUUF, as well as unsustainable practices. Now, in terms of productivity, a BMB study shows that there is connectivity between the reefs of the WPS and the reefs on the western coasts of the country, with the connection extending all the way to the Sulu Sea. During northeast monsoon or Amihan, coral reefs, coral and fish larvae are transported by ocean currents from the main archipelago to the WPS. The opposite happens during southwest monsoon or habagat when the coral and fish larvae from WPS are transported to the main archipelago. These natural processes demonstrate the interdependence between the two marine ecosystems. The Bureau of Fisheries of and Aquatic Resources, DABFAR, reports that the WPS serves as fishing grounds for a total of 294,730 fisher folk coming from regions 1, 3, NCR, 4A, and Mimaropa. The country's total fisheries production in 2019 is 4,415,002 metric tons, and the WPS accounts for only 323,684 metric tons, or 7.33% of the total fish production. To increase the catch of our fishermen in the WPS, the DABFAR has been installing fish aggregating devices, or payaus, in strategic locations. These payaus attract tuna and other fishes, which translates to reduced time for searching and catching fish. On petroleum resources, based on the available data from the sedimentary basins of Northwest Palawan, Southwest Palawan and Recto Bank, the Department of Energy estimates that the West Philippine Sea could potentially hold a deposit of about 6,048 million barrels of undiscovered oil and 7,108 billion cubic feet of undiscovered gas. For oil resources, the estimated discovered resource is about 155 million barrels while the estimated recoverable resource is about 96 million barrels. As of June 2020, the total oil produced from these three basins amount to 79 million barrels. For gas, the estimated discovered resource is about 5,050 billion cubic feet, while the estimated recoverable resource is 3,221 billion cubic feet. As of June 2020, the total gas produced from these three basins amount to 2,318 billion cubic feet. Now, in summary, the West Philippine Sea is a vital part of our maritime domain. It is rightly the Philippines' maritime entitlements under UNCLOS found in the western seaboard of the Philippine archipelago. The area is endowed with steel undetermined and untapped natural resources. The government is coordinating the efforts of different agencies, upgrading its marine scientific research fleet, supporting local, fi local fishermen and marine scientists, and employing all possible means to protect this vital part of the national patrimony while ensuring the safety of its citizens. This ends my briefing. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, DA Efren Karandang. Before we proceed to the Q&A session, a couple of mechanics muna para sa media bago tayo magsimula sa ating Q&A. For the Q&A portion, one, make sure that you join the Zoom meeting room with your name and the name of your media outlet. Two, questions sent in advance by the media will be read in order of submission. Three, to ask a question live, you may click the raise hand button. 
or notify me through the Zoom Q&A chat box. I will then call your attention when it's your turn to speak. 4. Please state your name and media outlet before asking your question and say to whom your questions are directed to. 5. To make way for other participants, the media participant may initially ask 2-3 to three questions. You will be allowed to ask more questions later on if time permits. 6. We encourage our media participants to please only limit your questions related to the topic. Alright, now the floor is now open for the question and answer session. Our first question will come from Lip Wang of Guangming Daily, China. Lip? Good Lip, morning, morning. Uh, Good morning, sir. Okay. Uh, my, my question goes to Factory Aspero. Uh, what do you think of the COC, the Code of Conduct? Do you think it will be finished by next year as scheduled? And what will the National Task Force for Philippine, West Philippine Sea uh, do to push it forward? Thank you. Well, uh, right now, Thank you, sir. right now uh, we have uh, the declaration of conduct of participants in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, that is the um, governing. Uh, declaration and agreement among uh, states uh, that are in the uh, South China Sea. We are moving towards the uh, code of conduct um, in, in our talks with China and uh, the ASEAN side is led by no less than the Philippines. Uh, we have already a single draft uh, on the agreements and we still hope that uh, by 2021, we could reach uh, the final, uh, uh, we could sign a final agreement on the Code of Conduct. And this will govern in a more orderly and more peaceful, more inclusive uh, activities in the uh, South China Sea. We are very positive about it. Uh, the talks are ongoing. Thank you, sir. Lip, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, y yes. Uh, uh, do, do you think the ongoing U.S. election will have something to affect the situation on the South China Sea? Thank you. I would imagine uh, the ongoing elections itself uh, does not have an effect on the West Philippine Sea or the South China Sea. But the outcome of the elections uh, certainly will have uh, effects in the South China Sea. Uh, if we have a re-elected president, then there will be a continuation of the current uh, uh, activities of the United States insofar as uh, going for freedom of navigation and overflights are concerned. If we will have a new president, uh, there will be some revisions of policies perhaps, but then uh, this is beyond us uh, right now, as uh, these are purely uh, speculative. Uh, let us remember that whoever is the uh, head of state of the United States, uh, we will uh, deal with him, our president will deal with him, as he does now, and uh, as he does with other heads of uh, state. So probably we'll just have to wait for a while and uh, to be more definitive in our answers regarding our relations with the United States. Uh, but we certainly hope that the elections will be completed uh, in uh, the right time in, the, in their own, uh, in their own uh, uh, rules and regulations. Thank you, Lip Wang of Guangming Daily. Thank you so much. Daily. Thank you. Um, again, uh, remind ko lang, please limit your questions na related to our topic only. Okay, Sir, uh, Sec, uh, June or DA Karandang, what is the importance of the presentation and protection of our maritime area in the long-term plan of the Philippine government? Uh, I would answer that, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, uh, as presented by, by Secretary Esperon earlier, fish 
and other aquatic resources are a staple of the Filipino diet. It feeds our citizens, and not only us, but also the other citizens, citizens of the other countries surrounding the South China Sea. So it is imperative, an imperative for us really to protect the, the health, the biodiversity, the ecosystem services that the, the maritime areas of the West Philippine Sea provides. As I have shown earlier, there is an interconnection, connectivity between the health of the uh, marine ecosystem in the South China Sea and the West Philippine Sea with that of the, our main archipelago. So uh, it behooves the government, really, the state, to do uh, its best, uh, all the means to protect conserve our marine resources. We must uh, remember that uh, our land area uh, of more than 300,000 square kilometers is only one-seventh of our maritime domain. And you can just imagine the wealth that goes with that uh, 210 million, uh, uh, 2.1 million square kilometers of uh, maritime domain, including fisheries, as well as uh, uh, minerals and other natural resources that are found in the seabed, among which is natural gas, uh, oil, and uh, coral reefs and other uh, and other riches of the of, of the seas. Uh, therefore, uh, it is just right that we uh, put much effort into protecting this maritime domain. Uh, because it serves the people, uh, it is also a buffer zone for our country, and definitely it is a source of a lot of uh, resources. A lot of nanjan ang ating kayamanan na napakalaki. Okay, sir. Thank you, Sir Jun. Next question, uh, Jun Kanyete of TechCast Media from Hong Kong. Jun, good morning. Hi, uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, Secretary Esperon. Uh, Deputy Administrator Karandang and ASEC JBO. Uh, I think my question is directed to Secretary Esperon. Uh, you may have mentioned this already in your you know, in your presentation, but I just like to have a more summar summary. Uh, what you call this? Um, uh, what you call this? Uh, clarification on this one. Uh, uh, what are the current actions undertaken by the Philippine government? in protecting or asserting our sovereignty and sovereign rights in the West Philippine Sea? Well, uh, first, uh, we have nine uh, uh, islands and uh, reefs that we occupy in the uh, West Philippine Sea, the biggest of which is uh, Pag-asa Islands. Islands because it is composed of uh, four uh, sandy case uh, above water level and two reefs which were uh, named uh, recently by the Kalayaan Municipality to be Pag-asa Islands. Uh, we are certainly taking care of that big, bigger, uh, biggest island as well as the others by improving our positions there. We now have uh, an excellent uh, uh, safe harbor in uh, Pag-asa Island, and we are about to... Um, repair our uh, 1.2-kilometer uh, airstrip in uh, Pag-asa Island. We are also improving the communications uh, in those islands as well as uh, putting in the necessary, uh, necessary uh, uh, markers, uh, lighthouses, and uh, many other things uh, that our troops and our uh, residents uh, need in the area. It is a very important that uh, to note that we have the Area Task Force uh, West and the Area Task Force uh, uh, North that are actually led by the Armed Forces of the Philippines, NOLCOM and uh, WESCOM. And therefore, uh, all assets of the military, uh, especially the Navy and the Air Force, and uh, even of the Army and uh, the Marine uh, Corps, could be deployed uh, in the area to protect not only our territory, but to uh, provide safety uh, uh, for our fisher folks uh, who are uh, in, the coastal, in the coastal areas. 
um, rest assured that uh, your national task force West Philippines are looking into all of this uh, and uh, we are on um, we, we are adopting a whole of nation approach into the development and uh, the uh, protection of the West Philippine Sea and uh, the uh, whole the whole government is indeed uh, uh, putting in resources in the area as we need meantime uh, our relations with the neighboring states as well as with other uh, countries that come into the South China Sea are taken care of by our diplomatic relations. And so the treatment of uh, what we have in the West Philippine Sea and the South China Sea are addressed in the different uh, fora, and not only the, in the ASEAN, but also with its, uh, uh, with its, uh, um, with, the, with, its regu with its regional, uh, regional uh, partners uh, to include uh, Japan, Korea, India, uh, Australia, and uh, the United States. So uh, you can be assured that uh, the necessary attention is put into the West Philippine Sea as well as in the uh, Philippine rice. June? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary Esperon. Uh, if I may have a follow-up question. Go ahead, sir. Now that you've mentioned about uh, diplomacy, oh, um, what impact or effects do the Philippines' uh, diplomatic profiles have on China's action in the West Philippine Sea? Can you repeat that? What impact oh, okay. diplomatic action? What impact effect do the Philippines' diplomatic profiles have on China's actions in the West Philippine Sea? Because, you know, in the previous years and months, uh, there have been a, a lot of activities from the side of China in terms of... Uh, claiming the territory. So what impact do you think this has on our diplomatic profile? Well, uh, overall, uh, it strengthened our assertion of our sovereignty and uh, sovereign rights in uh, within the boundaries of uh, the EEZ, mm -hmm. as well as uh, within the limits of the Kalayan Island Group. In our weekly meetings at the National Task Force West Philippine Sea, we evaluate uh, incidents and uh, developments, and if necessary, we recommend for uh, diplomatic action and uh, protest. On its own, the Department of Foreign Affairs can also take the, of course, uh, diplomatic action, and this has been continuing. Uh, but it is not only in terms of diplomatic protest or actions that we address our uh, relations with other countries. Uh, Specifically with China, we have our bilateral consultative mechanism, which was put up uh, right after the state visit of the president to China. And this uh, consultative mechanism has provided a venue or forum for us to trace out uh, uh, the, issues. the issues at hand. Uh, and uh, as you, as I have said, aside from the BCM that is uh, continuing, uh, every six months, uh, or even earlier, as uh, if deemed uh, necessary, we have the ongoing talks on the code of conduct. I, we believe that because of these mechanisms and diplomatic uh, actions, uh, we have uh, uh, come to a point where there is better understanding uh, of the nature of the issues that while we agree to disagree on uh, sovereignty and sovereign rights, uh, there is still uh, so, so much room for relations with, uh, with uh, all countries, including China. For after all, for China, for example, our relations with them does not start and end with the South China Sea. We have other uh, relations of the, with them in the field of diplomacy, trade, uh, trade uh, economics, culture, uh, cultural, and uh, uh, information exchange. And so uh, at this point, I must say that uh, we have uh, put in place a system that allows us to interact in a more orderly manner uh, with uh, our neighboring countries, 
but more importantly with uh, China. I'm not saying it's perfect, but uh, it was better than before. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Thank you, Jun Kanyete of TechCast Media Hong Kong. Uh, sir, uh, we have a phone-in question from Jonah Giolagon of Asahi Shimbun, a Japanese newspaper. Please describe the situation on the ground. How many foreign ships are in the Philippines or the Philippine claimed area on average? Before the monsoon season began, were Filipino fishermen men able to freely go to the area and stay as long as they needed? Uh, <clears throat> Foreign vessels, let us be conscious of the fact that after China uh, reclaimed uh, several islands that featured the uh, three air strips mm -hmm. in uh, Sobi Reef or Samora, uh, Fiery Cross, Cross and uh, Mischief uh, Reef, these were also put up with, uh, with harbors that, uh, that could accommodate uh, big ships. Mm. or big uh, vessels. And so in terms of uh, positioning in the area, they have been there since that time uh, that they have completed these uh, structures on uh, airports, uh, harbors, and uh, living areas. And therefore, uh, we see that uh, in uh, Subi, uh, Fiery Cross, and uh, Mischief primarily, they can station uh, uh, naval ships from the PLA, as well as uh, many bigger ships from the uh, Chinese Coast Guard. And this have also become the shelter of uh, Chinese uh, fishing uh, vessels. Some would call it uh, Chinese maritime uh, militias. And so they are there, uh, but we have not been lacking also in uh, projecting our forces. Uh, we There have been instances where there were almost 21 uh, fishing vessels around Pagasa Islands. But today, uh, there are only seven. And uh, they have maintained Coast Guard presence in uh, Scarborough uh, with several Chinese uh, fishing vessels. But our fishermen, over time, have also been fishing in the area already, including going inside the Scarborough with these smaller ships. Otherwise, we have our payaus uh, uh, that were put up by the Bureau of Fisheries uh, as uh, fish gathering devices where we, our fishermen could uh, fish. So you will also note that there are several Vietnamese uh, fishing vessels all over because these are traditional fishing grounds. Mm. Um, but uh, our common uh, drive now is uh, to have more of our own fishermen and uh, fishing bigger fishing vessels. Uh, Deputy Administrator Karandang here reported that uh, only 7.3% of our fishing uh, production. production comes from the West Philippine Sea. <clears throat> and it is the richest uh, fishing ground uh, in this uh, part of the world. Uh, it's practically the, uh, it's very rich and uh, we are getting uh, so little from it. Um, we must go for it at this, uh, as it could contribute to a big, uh, how much is that? The uh, blue economy that we are looking at, uh, that should uh, give us a lot of uh, more uh, financial muscle if we could exploit the West Philippine Sea. And so to be able to do that, we should also strengthen our Coast Guard uh, and have uh, better uh, fishing vessels. Okay, sir. Her second question is, now that the research activity is again allowed in the West Philippine Sea, what sort of protection can the Philippine government provide scientific vessels that will be going around the area? How would you describe the demeanor of the Chinese government vessels toward Philippine ships or boats? Uh, certainly, if foreign uh, marine research institutions are allowed to conduct uh, MSR within our waters, there are safeguards that are put in place by our Department of Foreign Affairs. They have to be boarded by Filipino scientists. We have, they have to share the data, not just the, the process data, but also the raw data with us. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of conditions. So that safeguards, uh, that, that assures us that uh, the MSR is being conducted 
only for MSR purposes. Now, for Filipino scientists, our expeditions are always being, uh, you know, monitored closely by our law enforcement uh, agencies. So that's why right now, uh, weather permitting, uh, we are always free to go there and conduct our own uh, MSR expeditions. We are happy to report that uh, through the National Task Force West Philippine Sea, uh, funds have been provided for the procurement of four maritime research vessels by the UP uh, Marine, Science, uh, uh, Marine uh, Science Institute. Uh, and so we will see more deployments from our, of, of our uh, scientists uh, in the West Philippine Sea, which could lead to Bet better knowledge of the area, including uh, fisheries uh, and what could be found in the uh, seabeds. It is very important that we have our own uh, MSRs. We already have three, uh, one in the Navy, one in the ANR, and one in the fisheries. Uh, uh, two in the uh, uh, Namria. And so this is the way to go. Uh, we should know what we have and exploit them uh, with, uh, with care, of course. Uh, and if necessary, in partnership with the whole world. After all, the own clause itself uh, dictates that we take care of the fisheries, nurture it, and if necessary, to share it with uh, other countries uh, who need uh, more fish. And so the idea is uh, for us to have better controls of uh, fishing in our, uh, uh, e within our EEZ so that uh, it could, uh, we could uh, optimize our benefits from, from the fishing industry. We are looking at uh, a vigorous, robust, uh, uh, blue economy. Thank you, sir. Our next question will come from Japan, from Joho Royce Shiroma of Filipina Shimbun from Tokyo. Good morning, Royce. Uh, good morning, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I have a question to Namriya Deputy, uh, Deputy Administrator Karandang. Um, there are proposals for parts of uh, the WPS to become maritime protected areas under the National Integrated Protected Area System. So my question is, what kind of management is required of the Philippine government given the multiple issues surrounding accessibility of the area? Thank you. Uh, certainly, we will be proposing, we are proposing, in fact, uh, certain areas, specific areas to be declared as uh, uh, marine protected areas. There are several types of uh, management uh, regimes that we are looking into depending on the location and depending on the situation on the ground. So, uh, we will start with the areas that we, held, we hold, <laughs> that we can control. But uh, we, this does not stop us from also opening our channels of communication with the other claimant states, uh, which we also uh, encourage to, to do the same. This is an activity that is uh, benign, activity that is bereft of any sovereignty claims, uh, purely for a marine scientific purposes. And uh, uh, the end goal really is to establish a network of marine protected areas in the whole of the South China Sea. But we will start uh, with our own building on the uh, experience that we have in uh, establishing and managing marine protected areas in other parts of the country. Rice. Yeah, in the okay. Philippine rice and in other parts of the country. I have, uh, can I have one more question? Um, what do you think are the benefits of having maritime protected areas in the WPS? Certainly, uh, we need to preserve, conserve the biodiversity in the area. There are threats. We have IUUF. We have uh, unsustainable fishing practices. We have land reclamations which uh, destroy the coral reefs. So we need to restore these uh, ecosystems. Uh, in order to bring back the productivity of the area and at the same time also uh, influence the productivity in other areas, just like what I presented before, there is connectivity between the productivity of the West Philippine Sea and the main uh, archipelago of the Philippines. But not only that, also in other parts of the coastal parts of the, 
of the West Philippine Sea and the South China Sea. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Royce uh, from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, kaugnay po sa topic na yun, sir, no? we have a question from Chino Gaston of GMA7 for DA Karandang. You mentioned unsustainable and destructive practices in the West Philippine Sea. Is this done by China, Vietnam, or Filipinos? If so, are we going to elevate this complaint to a higher international body as a violation of a protected marine protected area? What are our options since we cannot enforce against other nations? Oh, well, uh, right now we are uh, documenting uh, incidents of uh, destruction and unsustainable fishing practices, not only by China, but also by Vietnam. And we are documenting all of this, but we are raising these issues bilaterally for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Uh, another question from Chino. Uh, pwede po magpatanong if the government is totally ruling out the joint patrol with the U.S. or China or other countries as part of securing the territories, sir? Uh, if you are referring to uh, joint uh, exercises, uh, you have put them in ho on hold. Uh, okay. After all, after all, if we are to conduct uh, joint exercises or uh, a joint uh, patrol exercises, uh, we can do it within our uh, territorial waters or in areas uh, where we have enough uh, maneuver area, like the uh, Sulu Sea uh, or even... Uh, at the uh, side of the Philippine Sea. Um, for now, we, are, we have put them on hold uh, uh, for several reasons, uh, but uh, we will consider them again as the situation uh, develops. Uh, for now, we think that uh, uh, getting into uh, military exercises in the area don't contribute much to a peaceful, uh, a peaceful uh, South China Sea or West Philippine Sea. We will evaluate that. We will continue to evaluate that, uh, however. Thank you, sir. Our next question will come from Melo Acuna of the Asia Pacific Daily. Melo, good morning. Good morning, uh, Assistant Secretary Arsena, and uh, good morning to Secretary June Esperon. My questions are for you. Uh, how long does it take for the task force to evaluate Initial reports, either from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, or Philippine Coast Guard, and come up with the appropriate action by the Department of Foreign Affairs, because the Department of Foreign Affairs has uh, filed uh, several diplomatic protests on several maritime incidents. Secretary June Esperon, please. Well, uh, first of all, uh, Melo, uh, good morning to you and uh, good morning. Our, our, our friends. Uh, um, the National Task Force uh, for the West Philippine Sea meets every Tuesday or uh, sometimes uh, maybe Wednesday, but we see to it that we meet every, every week. Every week. Uh, therefore, uh, the time frame for actions would be within that period. Uh, whether it is a weekday or a weekend, uh, we can always act on matters that uh, come to our attention. Um, Remember that our organization includes the uh, NOLCOM, AP NOLCOM and WESCOM, which actually lead the Area Task Force uh, North and the Area Task Force uh, West. Yes. And so we have 24-7 uh, uh, coverage of the, of the whole area of responsibility. And uh, our uh, operation centers are, of course, on 24-7 uh, duty also. And uh, as you may know, uh, the advent of uh, better technology uh, that brings you Viber and uh, WhatsApp and uh, internet itself uh, fa uh, simply gives us a faster time, a faster uh, reaction on such things. Uh, whether there is a written report or not, if we see that uh, we need to lodge, la uh, to lodge immediately uh, political action, then uh, we will do it within the week. And uh, mm -hmm. as soon as verifications have come in, remember that verifying something within the West Philippine Sea can uh, be done not only by our maritime uh, patrols, by Philippine Air Force aircraft or Navy uh, 
uh, aircraft also, but also by our Coast Guard but, and our uh, assets that are already in the area. So I must say uh, we can do it uh, within the day, uh, Melo, if we have to yeah. put in some. Besides, uh, Secretary Loxin can always uh, call the uh, ambassador or his uh, counterparts. Uh, uh, we leave that to, to him uh, in terms of dealing with uh, foreign countries. But uh, the matter of uh, having maritime awareness and uh, deployments in the uh, West Philippine Sea as well as uh, in the other parts of our domain are left to our uh, national task force, which yes. includes military as well as uh, civilian agencies. Yes. Thank you, Secretary. Let me ask you another question. What guidance have you provided the armed forces of the Philippines, particularly the Philippine Navy, to prevent any untoward armed conflict? Because there are uh, other... Uh, ...in the South China Sea. Melo? Melo? I think we lost uh, signal. You lost signal, uh, Melo. Yes, sir. Uh, ayusin muna natin yung signal ni Melo. Okay, for habang wala pa yung uh, susunod na tanong, abalikan na lang natin si Melo, no? Okay, we, ha we have a phone-in question from Celerino Monte of Manila, Shimbun. If possible, sir, okay, I think this is for, for Secretary Esperon. If possible, please ask how soon can the government purchase the four maritime vessels and how much? Uh, the... Uh Research vessels are costed at uh, 25 million each, and uh, we are putting in uh, more equipment into that. Uh, that is in so far as the uh, vessels of uh, the uh, MSI uh, UP. But uh, I have been advised that uh, it will take. Uh, uh, six more months before we could have the uh, uh, vessels of the United uh, University of the Philippines uh, Marine Scientific uh, Institute, Marine Science Institute. But as I said, we already have uh, research vessels from the NAMRIA, uh, from the Philippine Navy, as well as the uh, uh, Bureau of Fisheries. Okay, sir. Our next question. Uh, mula naman kay Gillian Torre, Cortes of Business World. When will the government submit its documents to the UNCLOS defining the Philippines, the Philippines' claim on the West Philippine Sea? According to some international studies... To the United Nations. Yes, sir. To UNCLOS, sir. According to some international studies experts, the Philippines has done this for other waters. It has claimed on, but not yet with the West Philippine Sea. I think uh, Gillian is referring to our submission for an extended continental shelf. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we have been preparing uh, for another submission, this time in the Western Palawan region. And we have actually signified this when we responded to the Malaysian submission in December 2019. Yes, we are making preparations and we will be submitting it to the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf at the proper time. Thank you, sir. Okay, no, si Melo? Melo, for your last yes. question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Arsene. For Secretary June Esperon, uh, what guidance have you provided uh, the armed forces of the Philippines, particularly the Philippine Navy, to prevent any untoward incident within the South China Sea, considering the presence of different uh, navies, militias, coast guard, what guidance have you given them to prevent such untoward incidents? Secretary June, please. We have a uh, well-established, long-established navy, and they have uh, protocols and uh, rules of engagements. The same for uh, the Philippine Air Force and uh, the Coast Guard. Uh, we just came up with the manual of uh, the uh, Philippine Coast Guard, uh, a new one, a new one. And so it is in these manuals and uh, rules of engagement that uh, guidances are given. Uh, what I can tell you is that we will not fire the first shot anyway. And uh, mm -hmm. in our daily uh, patrols, uh, we have also our rules on uh, our responses and challenges.
to vessels and uh, uh, aircrafts uh, that would come in, uh, within our, he, he said. Um, certainly, we are asserting our, uh, our sovereign, uh, sovereign rights over our, he, he said. And so, uh, you can be, you can rest assured that our manuals, uh, that our Navy, Air Force, uh, and Coast Guard have uh, very well established the uh, rules on this. They know what to do. They know what to do. And they report uh, very promptly uh, on, on, uh, on the developments on the, on the ground or on at sea, as I must say. Yeah. Thank you very much, Secretary. I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Sir Melo. Um, tanong naman wala kay Mart Martin Sadongdong of Manila Bulletin. How does the National Task Force on the for the West Philippine Sea view the recent actions of the Quad Group, U.S., Japan, India, and Australia, to counter China's moves in the West Philippine Sea? Well, the Quad Group group is composed of the United States, uh, Australia. Uh, India and Japan. Yes, sir. Uh, they are. Uh, they they hold to the policy of uh, free and open Indo-Pacific, meaning the combination of the uh, uh, Indian Ocean as well as the uh, uh, Pacific. Uh, in the middle of which is uh, the South China Sea. Um, we certainly agree with their with the with the principle of uh, free and open uh, Indo-Pacific uh, uh, oceans. And that is also what we have in the South China Sea. We believe that uh, the South China Sea, which carries about uh, five uh, trillion uh, value of trade uh, for all, uh, for many nations, should be open, uh, peaceful, inclusive, meaning it, nobody should be excluded there. Uh, all countries that can trade and uh, want to navigate through the area should be included. It must be, there must be rules, rules based, and uh, it must result to the prosperity of all nations that are located in the area. We abide by those principles. Uh, uh, and so we would like to thank them also for their support of our, uh, of the arbitral award, uh, which was uh, given to us, uh, which we won. Uh, which the president has, uh, of course, uh, pronounced to be uh, beyond the uh, manipulations of passing governments, uh, not subject to uh, to revisions or abandonment. Uh, so, <clears throat> if the Quad uh, countries uh, are for that, which they are, uh, for a free and open Indo-Pacific, then uh, certainly we support them. Thank you, sir. Ang susunod na magtatanong ay si Noela or Ella Maj of the National Public Radio. Hi, sirs. Good hi, morning. Ella. Ella, good morning. Yes, hi. Sir, uh, for Secretary Esperon, sir, a few weeks ago we have the Philippine Navy uh, saying that they will be deploying Filipino fishermen as our militia. Um, question is, are, are our Filipino fishermen ready? And are, are we arming them? Oh, well, uh, the idea of, uh, of uh, fishermen being militias uh, had been put in use. Uh, my two undersecretaries uh, who are from the Navy have uh, been commanders in the naval forces, uh, of naval forces that have used uh, um, militias or Bantay Bayan uh, to for particular missions, uh, Bantay Dagat, to protect the sea. Uh, but within uh, definitely territorial waters that are not in dispute, that are not disputed by others. We must also, be, we must admit that uh, we know that the uh, Chinese government has been deploying uh, uh, Chinese uh, maritime militias that are under the control of its uh, Coast Guard. And uh, we, we know that uh, they are in the uh, South China Sea and in the West Philippine Sea. Um, they are very well equipped. They are bigger ships, uh, uh, I must say. Uh, sometimes they are deployed in, uh, around Pag-asa Island and uh, 
they're just uh, doing minimal fishing. Uh, they're just there to because uh, Subi Reef is only 16 nautical miles from Pagasa Island, <clears throat> and uh, Subi Reef provides them uh, shelter. So the use of maritime militias is uh, very well known, but uh, today, uh, in so far as West Philippine Sea, uh, we have not finalized any plans for the deployment of our uh, uh, fishermen as uh, militias. For one, for several reasons, one among which is uh, we might have to train them so that there will be no uh, actions that could be misconstrued or be the source of mis miscalculations. Two, so that they will be better protected. Uh, and so, also, we want them not as militias. We want them as uh, good fishermen. Because as uh, D.A. Karandang has said, we only get out of our total fisheries uh, cuts of uh, 100%, we get only 7.3 from the West Philippine Sea. Hey, wh why allow that to continue? So we might as well uh, have more fishermen uh, going to the West Philippine Sea as fishermen and leave the uh, control and the, sa of, uh, the provision of safety and uh, uh, safety at sea to the Coast Guard, and if necessary, uh, to deploy the Navy and the Philippine Air Force for uh, matters that are meant to protect our sovereignty. Let us not uh, put their weak forces. Uh, uh, I would have a preference for uh, well-trained uh, forces that are better equipped, that are better equipped rather than ragtag uh, fishermen who would go there. Uh, if we have to put in their people, then we might as well equip our fishermen for a good purpose, which is uh, catching uh, fish and protect, and protect the environment. We could use them to protect our environment. Uh, and so I'd like to see the plan first of uh, the militia deployment there, but. Uh, uh, for now, we don't have it in the uh, West Philippine Sea. Thank you, sir. We have Bantai Dagat in our coastal areas. Ella? Okay, sir. Sir, yes. Another question, though. Um, what is happening in our eastern seaboard uh, at the moment? Um, we know that China has increasing presence there as well. They've named uh, features there um, uh, with Chinese names. So what is the task force doing on that side? Well, uh, if I may answer that, Ella. Uh, regarding the naming, the Philippines has also named a number of features, and in fact, these were accepted and approved by the IHO's Special Committee on Undersea Feature Names, and we are continuing to do so. It's only a few, around four Chinese names that were accepted, and that was before. But right now, uh, the SCOFEN, the committee that is tasked to review, accept, and evaluate all these uh, name submissions now know that the Philippines is asserting its rights to name the features in this area. So annually, we are making our submissions, and uh, I do not have the exact number, but we have quite a number of uh, names that were Filipino names that were already approved for, for uh, uh, the Eastern Seaboard. Regarding the conduct of the uh, MSR of uh, the Chinese vessels, I think they are being conducted far offshore in the Pacific, well into the Pacific Ocean, and not really near the, the Philippine shores. Thank you, Ella Madge of the National Public uh, Radio. Our last uh, live question will come from uh, Pia Ranyada of Rappler. Pia? Um, yeah, for sec June 1st, sir, uh, how is the National Task Force preparing for the, um, the, the development of uh, service contracts in the West Philippine Sea, given that the president has just lifted the moratorium? I mean, in what ways are we preparing and how soon does the National Task Force expect the, the licensees to be going to the West Philippine Sea or um, sending ships there? 
Well, we have the Memorandum of Understanding with China in uh, 2018, uh, which we would like to hold on to, uh, among others, among others, uh, when we deploy our uh, our uh, platforms uh, to the uh, uh, Malampaya as well as to the Reed Bank. Uh, the Department of uh, Energy has been designated by the National Task Force uh, West Philippine Sea to be the leader of the uh, task group on matters of uh, uh, giving administrative and operational control to all the platforms that are in the in the area. Uh, it's a civilian-led uh, uh, task group uh, led by the Department of Energy. Nonetheless, we have uh, also the task group that comes uh, uh, as a matter of as a matter of policy and uh, contingency when we whenever we have uh, important activities in the area and that is led by the military by the westcom and we are uh, while this is separate from the task group for uh, for recto bank and uh, malampaya uh, task group o uh, energy we call it task group energy uh, it can always call on the uh, on the uh, task task group uh, that is created by Westcom for security purposes. Uh, it should not be that uh, we deploy first the the our military assets there. Uh, we want the platforms, uh, commercial platforms, uh, to be deployed first in the area. But uh, we are the military will be on standby. Yeah. Um, sir, sir, how about for exploration ships? Because um, they may not be putting up platforms yet, but these companies might want to explore. And uh, does the task force then, uh, will, will you deploy ships to protect them? And how soon do you expect these ships to start going there? Like by the end of the year, can we expect certain service contractors to be sending you, yes. such ships? Uh, and are we planning to talk to China about these activities because um i i, I heard um on officials say that that was one of the options fielded that we first approached china to to talk about these uh possible activities as to the question of how soon we will deploy to the area please remember that our uh, ships are already deployed with the westcom and the uh, under the control control of westcom and they are in the area and so if there are exigencies and contingencies that have to be addressed, then we can tap them as part of the task group controlled by the military in the area. The task group energy, which is led by Department of Energy, will be the uh, entity that will take care of the deployment of uh, platforms and in the preparations for the exploration uh, in the area. China will always come into the area, uh, and we have had we have uh, taken uh, uh, measures to see to it that it will be on the basis of the MOU that we signed in 2018, and uh, our continuing uh, engagements with uh, China, uh, including the visit of uh, Secretary Loxin uh, to China last uh, October. Uh, 11, I think, uh, after the uh, UN General Assembly uh, uh, is part of the overall efforts in exercising our uh, uh, instruments of national power, uh, including diplomatic, uh, informational, uh, military, uh, economic, to see to it that uh, we benefit from the bounties of our uh, seabeds and continental shelf. Uh, so. Uh, we are confident that uh, the exploration will push through and we hope that uh, these uh, explorations will result into production by something like uh, 2024 or 2025. Our Malampaya deposits are fast uh, getting depleted. As we all know, the Malampaya provides 30% uh, of our energy. Uh, it provides through the pipelines uh, natural gas that we fuel our uh, power plants in uh, Batangas. Uh, 
and uh, they are fast getting depleted. Uh, we will. S what we want to do is uh, to have uh, additional uh, fields for natural gas and uh, oil uh, when uh, finally Malampaya goes out of uh, operations. Okay. All right. Thank you, P. Aranyada of Rappler. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. Unfortunately, that was the last question that we have time for. Do you have any closing statements or remarks or message before ending this virtual presser? Well, uh, one of the objectives uh, of this uh, uh, press uh, conference uh, is to reintroduce to you the National Task Force on the West Philippine Sea. And uh, at this point, we want to assure our uh, countrymen that 24-7, uh, you have the National Task Force West Philippine Sea that is uh, uh, guarding or keeping track, keeping track of uh, what is happening in the West Philippine Sea, in the uh, Philippine Rice and the uh, Philippine Sea. Uh, we have our deployments there uh, in the West Philippine Sea, including our big, biggest uh, detachment in uh, Pag-asa Islands. And uh, certainly, we are improving those uh, positions. Meantime, uh, the capabilities must con con capability development must continue, not only with the armed forces, but uh, also with the Philippine Coast Guard, the Philippine National Police, and the Bureau of Fisheries, as well as the Department of uh, uh, Environment and Natural Resources, who we see will be one of the key players here, as uh, it will be our uh, administrator of several uh, marine protected areas in the West Philippine Sea. Um, through this uh, press con, uh, we have also shown to you the capabilities uh, that we can, the, the capabilities or the task that we can do. Let us remember that the National Task Force West Philippine Sea works under the uh, office of the president and uh, gets directions from the cabinet cluster for security, justice, and peace. And uh, we work, uh, we have uh, agent, all the agencies that are concerned with, uh, with uh, our domains. And so you can rest assured that uh, our uh, resources, which we have said to be 2.1 square kilometers, uh, maritime domain, are taken care of. Uh, within our uh, capabilities. Thank you, Sir Jun. Uh, Deputy Administrator Garandam. Yes, as we have been saying, our stakes for the living and non-living resources in the West Philippine Sea are high. The vast sea, as well as its seabed, are key to our food and energy security. The health of the marine ecosystem in the West Philippine Sea affects the health and productivity of the coastal waters of the main archipelago. The waters of the West Philippine Sea also serve as a maritime highway through which our goods, our merchandise, and the merchandise of other nations are transported and traded. It therefore behooves the government to develop and protect this vital part of the national patrimony. In exercising our sovereignty, sovereign rights, and jurisdiction, over the West Philippine Sea, our government is always guided by the rule of law. We claim our maritime entitlements and exercise our maritime obligations in accordance with international law. Even in the presence of disputes, we engage and maintain good relationships with our neighbors under the ambit of UNCLOS and other avenues for regional and uh, international cooperation. While the political climate at times may be complex, we strive to promote a culture of peace and cooperation within the ASEAN region and beyond. Along with the chair of the NTFWPS, I thank you for your active participation. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, DA Karandang. Thank you, Sek Jun. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you for joining us and to all of the journalists for participating and for your questions. We will provide a transcript as soon as it is available. If you would like to receive any of these products as you haven't already RSVP'd, please send an email 
to PCOO Global Media at pco.gov.ph. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for more updates about the Duterte administration and the PCOO. Thank you again for your participation. Until the next virtual presser, magandang tanghali po. Sa gitna ng krisis na kinakaharap ng bansa, makakatiyak ang mga mamamayan na patuloy na pagbubutihin ng ating pamalaan ang pagtugon sa pandemya.